So let me tell you a true story about a narcissist who was late for a lunch meeting and how we dealt with it. Three friends, myself included, were meant to meet up for lunch, brunch, on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock in the town where we lived. And two of us were there on time, as usual, punctually. And the third person, who had a history of being a drama queen, of being late, of creating problems, of being negative, of complaining about everyone, of having strings of girlfriends where things were murky and strange, of hitting on other people's girlfriends, and so on and so forth, he was late, as per usual. Back then, we had no idea what toxic people were, what narcissists were. We observed that he was a lovely person in the first three months of knowing him, and from then on, he was always systematically horrible. So we were there at 11 o'clock. We waited for a while, didn't have any news, and decided to go and get brunch as we were both hungry, and we had no particular reason to wait when the other person didn't write. We assumed he'd be showing up in a few minutes, so there was no no drama. We get the brunch, we sit down, we start eating, he doesn't show up, we wait and wait. It's 11.30, still not there. At 11.45, he walks in, huffing and puffing, with scorn on his face, and looks at us, and starts accusing us, saying, I can't believe you didn't wait for me. <laughs> and we just looked at him, and I just said, you do realize you're 45 minutes late. He goes, well, that's not my fault, I couldn't find a parking. And I point out, you couldn't find a parking. There's a public parking close by. He says, well, that's, that's too expensive. It's like, I can't afford to pay that. I'm, I'm strapped for cash. I can't afford to pay it. So I point out, the parking on Sundays costs approximately $10 for a couple of hours. The breakfast we're having costs approximately $20. That's a 50% increase. However, you claim that you've been driving around the block for 45 minutes looking for parking. That costs gas, first of all. So you're not saving $10, you're saving less than $10. And you're also making the two of us wait for 45 minutes without warning us, with no explanation, with no apology. And you show up here and you start fighting. How does that even make sense? It's, it's illogical. And then he points out, well, you chose this place. It's difficult to park here on Sundays. <laughs> So I mentioned, well, you knew we were coming here. Why didn't you leave earlier? If you knew that it's difficult to park here on Sundays, you could have left early enough to find a parking space, or you could have gone to the paid parking and you would have been here on time. In all cases, we're not saying anything. You've disrespected us. You walk in and start shouting, and we have not complained at all. If anyone should be complaining in this situation, it's us. It's not you. This makes no sense whatsoever. So anyway, go and get your breakfast, stop complaining, come back, and let's enjoy each other's company. And that's it. And he was going round in circles, really angry, and said, do you think I want to sit with you when you've been treating me this way? So we just shrugged and go, well, if you want to leave, leave. We've, we've had breakfast. We've eaten. We don't care. If you want our company, stay and stop complaining. If you don't want to stop complaining, then leave. Your choice. So he left. And the two of us looked at each other and thought, well, that's weird. Well, good riddance. Why would we want to put up with a toxic person who would spend his time complaining, pointing fingers, and instead of merely apologizing when he's late because he can't get organized or he's too tight to pay for parking or he's looking for problems, why would we even want his company in the first place? It made no sense. I'll tell you another story about this chap, because he is so toxic, it is comical. This person moved to Australia, allegedly, and spent 10 years there. And in Australia, he got married, he had two children, two daughters, and then he met someone else, developed feelings for her, abandoned the family, moved back to Europe, then tried to move his family to Europe, but then moved the family back to Australia to stay with this other person with whom he broke up anyway. A complicated mess. He complained that his wife would not allow him to talk to his daughters. And everyone assumed that the wife was being completely unreasonable by not allowing him to talk to his daughters. Observe the choice, not allowing him. One day I asked, what do you mean specifically she doesn't allow you to talk to your daughters? I mean, as in, you call and she refuses to put you through? 
So he, he huffed and puffed and said, no, it's nothing like that. And mind you, this was a few years ago. I bought iPod touches so my daughters can be connected on Skype. My wife refuses to let them get connected to Skype, so I can't talk to them. I pointed out that, first of all, with Skype, it's possible to send messages and people see the messages and you can determine what time you're online. But indeed, maybe the wife forbids them to be on Skype. But I started thinking, maybe the daughters just don't want to talk to you because you're being a bit too much of a... But, you know, who knows? But then I asked, what happens when you call the landline? Does the mother, the ex-wife, does she refuse to put you through to the daughters? And he, he looked at me and said, I can't do that. It's too expensive. It's Australia. It costs a fortune. So I pointed out, well, first of all, when you call with Skype, it doesn't cost a fortune. It costs a few cents. He said, that's not true. So I suggested, let's look it up. Let's go online with our smartphones. Let's check the cost. And the cost was indeed a few cents per minute of just a few dollars per hour maximum. I think it was even less, a few cents per hour. And instead of being happy and being relieved and thinking, my goodness, thank you, you have found a solution. He was furious. I couldn't understand why. I'm like, I just solved your problem, so you should be happy. But what I did instead is I removed the excuse he had to be able to complain about his wife and play victim. So he was furious about it. But then I even pointed out, even if it costs you $10 per hour to talk to your daughters or $50 per hour, that's a small price to pay to stay in touch with your children. I mean, seriously? $50 per hour, assuming it's that, you could afford to do it once or twice a month with your salary. This was the guy who claimed to be an architect and he was driving an expensive car, had expensive flats, liked to buy expensive, low quality, but expensive clothes. He had no taste. But for him, spending any money to talk to his daughters was impossible. Of course, we now know it's not true. It wasn't that it was impossible. He didn't want to. He simply wanted to play victim and he wanted to be able to blame things on his ex-wife. This is the mindset. The same person who won't pay for parking but will make his friends wait and then will complain that the friends did something or other is someone looking to pick a fight. The person who complains that the ex-wife doesn't let the daughters connect with their iPod touches because she doesn't want them to talk to the father, but he doesn't actually make any effort. He is not acting like someone who wants to be in touch with his daughters. And the only conclusion is, well, you probably don't. The friend with whom we were having the brunch and I one point told him, if this is really an issue, you know what? We'll fly all of us to Australia. The two of us will go and talk to your ex-wife We'll talk to your daughters. We'll pay for the tickets if you're strapped for cash. You're our friend. We're willing to do this. We'll both take one or two weeks of vacation. We'll come with you. We'll take the daughters on a road trip. We'll do something to help create bonds with your daughters. We're willing to do this because you're our friend. And instead of thinking, wow, that's amazing. I'm so lucky to have such good friends. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Or instead of saying, guys, thank you. That's too much. That's not reasonable. But thank you. Instead, he got silent, first of all. And then he looked for reasons why it wouldn't work until we both just said, you know, if you don't want to do it, it's fine. But if you don't want to do it, stop talking to us about the situation because we've now offered you four or five distinct solutions and you've turned every single one down. So if you've turned all of the solutions down, that simply tells us you're okay with the situation which is okay, you're entitled to be okay, stop telling us about it. If you complain and don't want a solution, stop complaining. If you do want a solution, and we've suggested a few, if you've turned all of them down, look for a better one. But if you turn down five solutions offered to you without suggesting a single one and with doing nothing, that simply tells us you want attention, stop. As you can guess, of course, there was a big fallout. And I'm so relieved that I haven't heard from this person for nearly a decade. It's really funny, though, to see that I can still use these anecdotes to entertain and educate people about toxic behaviors. And here's my suggestion. When people act in ways that seem completely unreasonable, be willing to shrug it off. And now I'm really curious. Does any of what I've described sound like anyone you know? Do let me know in the comments.